Hi there, this is Nono and this is an overview on WebSockets. We're going to see a quick overview of what the WebSocket protocol is and learn how to build a WebSocket server and a WebSocket client. The WebSocket protocol is a standard to establish connections between a server and multiple clients, mainly used for real-time data exchange and interactions and for building collaborative applications. One of the most common examples of the use of WebSockets is uh, chat applications. Here we have a centralized server, a WebSocket server, to which multiple clients connect to. When a client sends a message, the server broadcasts the message to all other clients. A more intricate application uh, could be collaborative drawing. Here, each client is drawing on a web client, basically running P5. And those strokes are being sent as WebSocket messages that the server then distributes to other clients. This enables real-time collaboration. What happens when we try to connect um, to a WebSocket client is an HTTP request with um, a request to upgrade the protocol to WebSocket and the server responds um, with a switching protocol uh, response. Let's now see how to create a WebSocket server using the Express and WS packages of Node and then how to create a WebSocket client with the reconnecting WebSocket uh, package. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a WebSocket server. I'm gonna open a terminal window and navigate to the desktop to create the WebSocket uh, server folder, navigate to it and open it in Visual Studio Code. Uh, the first thing we need to do to set up the project that is right now empty is uh, run npm init that will start a new node project on that folder and I'm basically giving to it all the defaults. And the next thing we need to do is to install Express and WebSocket, the WS package. Um, this will add uh, the node models folder and all of the dependencies of these packages to our project folder. Mm, you can notice also how the index.js file is not created yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and create it. And this will be the entry point of our application. Uh, you can see how uh, this works already. Now we have an entry point and we're gonna have to add now the code of our WebSocket server uh, to this file. Um, we need uh, to require uh, some dependencies. Uh, the first one is express. Then also uh, the WebSocket library that we're using. The server property of this uh, library. And that is it for now. <coughs> we'll add also another dependency later, but we'll see that later. Uh, what we need to create is our server that we can define with Express and say that we're going to be uh, listening on port uh, 3000 on our local host for now. And then our WebSocket server that we're going to initialize like this. And um, with this setup, uh, we can now uh, tell the server what it needs to do uh, when there is an open connection. On connection, this WebSocket is going to execute this anonymous function. And we're going to say that uh, client was connected. And now we can define uh, what happens on the different events that uh, each client is going to generate on the server. 
So on close, we're just gonna say client is connected. When we receive a message, and this is probably the most important one uh, function, um, we're going to um, get that message and we're gonna try so a client would emit a message and send it to the server and what we want to do is to broadcast it to everyone else that is connected right the first thing we're gonna do is that the server is going to log the message to the console um, this would be like this and then we're gonna get the clients of our websocket connection and for each of them we're gonna run a function that if the client is not the websocket itself and if it's ready state is open we're gonna send them the message so we're gonna trust that this works um, because what we're gonna do next is uh, create a WebSocket client right just to verify that this is working I'm gonna go and run a WebSocket client that I already have on my computer this is how we would run the server and we don't see anything because we haven't really written anything to the console but we will do later and I'm gonna run a WebSocket client that I already have on my computer so this WebSocket client is gonna connect and it seems that it's connected we can test that by creating two different clients and seeing if the messages affect the other yes so this is working uh, so now uh, we have the minimal code uh, that we need to have a WebSocket server running locally on our computers and being able to have clients connect to it we're gonna add some other things um, like an event to when we initiate the server to lock uh, the port that we're running the server onto the screen and also an initial path so we can access um, this from a browser but we'll do that later let's now focus leave this aside and let's now focus on building our WebSocket client so I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same I did before create the folder for the WebSocket client initiate the project with the defaults and now install, but now we're going to install the reconnecting WebSocket um, package that I, meant, that I mentioned before. And this package, uh, what it does is that um, if you lose connection to the WebSocket server, it will try to reconnect by itself automatically. So note the name of the package is reconnecting WebSocket. And we also need uh, the HTML5 WebSocket package. This second one we need because usually there are some um, libraries and functionality that exists on the browser but we are running in Node.js so we don't have that and we have to download a package for it um, the same way that before this has created the file structure of our project and we're gonna go uh, to its folder with Visual Studio Code and what I'm gonna do is create an index.js file in this index.js file we're gonna do two things we're gonna set the wet socket connection and also some message handlers that we'll see later as before uh, we're gonna load uh, some uh, dependencies like the HTML5 WebSocket dependency and the reconnecting WebSocket dependency Now we're going to do a uh, WebSocket initialization. Um, the first thing we need to do is that we need to have um, 
WebSocket host to which we're going to connect. Right now it's just local host because it's in our computer and a port. The same that we set before in the other uh, part of the code that is the server. And uh, now we need some options for our server. And this is mainly to let um, a WebSocket client know that it needs to use that uh, HTML WebSocket library that we're requiring there. And then we're going to get our WebSocket client in initiated like this. So we are creating a new WebSocket object and we need to pass it the URL of the host. So we have the host and now we pass the port. And by default, this is the uh, HTTP route that the WebSocket uh, server is going to accept for us to switch protocols from HTTP requests to WebSockets. And we pass the options here. And it's important here that we set a timeout because this would be if our client disconnects, this would be the frequency, so one second that it will try to reconnect to the to the WebSocket server. So now what we do is add an event uh, listener to an open event. This is um, when we open a connection to the server. And we're going to log that the client uh, established connection to the server. So connection to WebSocket was opened. And then uh, we're going to send a message. So the first WebSocket message that we're sending is going to say, hello, this is a message from a client. And this is all for now. Um, we can also put our uh, event listener for when we receive a message. And I think um, with this, we could try, but let's add two more event listeners to when the server is closed. So this means that we lose connection because we lose internet or because the server actually shuts down. And then the last uh, event listener we're going to add is uh, on error. And here we're going to simply um, take action if the error code is ehost down, which means that the server failed and is down. This is a basic setup of our WebSocket server, our WebSocket client, and let's try it out. So we're going to open one window uh, with our WebSocket server running and it's running in localhost 3000 and now we're going to execute um, our client. Let's make this smaller to see them both at the same time. So um, we have started the client and it established connection to the server and then the server said that a client was connected and received the message that the client sent. Hello, this is a message from client. If we disconnect and connect the client, see that the client was disconnected. And now we see that the client was connected again. And what we can do is that we can leave the client connected, but disconnect the server and see that the client knows that the connection was closed. And he's trying to reconnect every second. Now we can start the server again and then instantaneously the client um, gets a connection back to it. To have a persistent application, we will need to actually um, keep a unique ID of the server that has disconnected and some authentication information. But with this, we can do a lot 
of stuff already. Let's try to see what that stuff is. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the client code and this is a server code so let's go to the client code and we're going to add a bit more functionality. Um, let's see what I mentioned before of what the handlers are. Handlers to me are functions that know how to handle a specific messages. So sometimes you have an application and we, you want to send a message and this me message, as we saw before on the chat, needs to go into a board where all the messages are displayed, for example. But if it was an instruction, like say a client says that they want to change the background color of the application, there will have to be some logic on the client that knows how to react to changing the background color. Let's try to implement that. So the first thing I do is like I create a JavaScript object that's going to contain all my handlers. And we said that one handler is going to be set background color. And a handler is no more than a function that gets a message. And our logic will go here. Um, we just need some um, logic on or a function to actually handle a message. So if we pass a message to this function, what we want to do is to check if the message has a given structure. What I haven't mentioned yet is that all the messages that we're passing so far are plain um, strings that don't really have any structure. They're just a string that we're passing around. The same way we're passing um, this string, we could pass a stringified version of a JSON object which is a structured data in JavaScript. Uh, how do we do that? Um, I could do that directly by sending um, a message that is a JSON stringified object. And we can do this um, by defining the method that we want, set background color, and then the parameters, which is having a color uh, that is, for example, blue. This uh, JSON uh, data structure is one that I made up, uh, but it uh, resembles the data structure of uh, JSON RPC, which is a protocol for communication uh, between different uh, clients and servers. So if we uh, want to understand this a bit better, what's happening here is that this JSON stringified function is converting this um, JavaScript object into a string. We can see this working on our server and a client. Um, we don't need to restart the server, but we need to restart our client. So if we restart the client, we see that after sending this hello message, we're sending a stringified version of a JSON object. Let's make this a bit smaller so you can see the whole thing. So this is a stringified version of the JavaScript object. And Right now, the client doesn't really know what to do with it. I mean, it might receive it, but it doesn't really know anything to do with that. Um, what we need to do is to have um, a handler function that we're going to code here. So as you saw before, we have a method and we have parameters. So if our method is undefined, that this would happen if we're sending just a plain string without uh, our data structure in JSON, we're going to return because this function cannot do anything. Um, if it doesn't, uh, we're going to grab our method and know what it is by defining a variable. And then if there is a method, um, we are going to look for our handler function from here. We're going to say that if handlers has a function for that method, um, we're going to define the handler as that function and then we're going to run it passing the message as the argument and if there is not we're just going to log to the console that we don't have a handler for that <laughs> and that would be our logic so now, um, as we're already passing a set background color message with our client, we can um, try that out. We can have one client here and create another client. 
and run them both at the same time. So we can run this one and we can run this one. So they are um, they are receiving the message, but we haven't really put on any part of the code that the handle message function should be executed. So let's make that um, right here. So when we receive the message, um, <coughs> We're going to try uh, here. We're going to have to check first if the message that we're getting, the data, uh, is something that we can parse to JSON or if it's a simple string. So what we're going to do is going to try and do that our message is JSON parse in data. And we're going to catch the error. We're just basically going to say here that um, the client is going to say, message is not parsable to JSON. This is going to happen with the hello message, but this won't happen with our um, with our other me message that is a structure with JSON. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say handle message message. And this will happen when we get something that is JSON and we can parse it we will call the handle message function. And then um, here uh, we will see if the method uh, field is in there. Otherwise, we will ignore it because you can pass any JSON. So we're trying to look for something that looks like the structure that we have here. Then here in the background, we'll still have to put the logic. But for now, we're going to say client set background color handler. And this. Uh, is going to we're gonna run now. So we're going to run this client, and now we're gonna run this client. So here um, we receive a message: "Hello, this is a message from client." That the client said that it's not parsable to JSON. But the other one, the one that we actually put like a JSON object in there, is going through our handle message and is actually finding the handler for say background color. Now, um, what we can do um, is accessing from, from within our handler the parameters. So we can log here uh, that the client found that uh, color of background or just color is, and we can say here, m message params color. Are we going to restart both clients? And we can see that the color is blue. So we've accessed from function handler, we've accessed the color variable that we were defining on the message as a parameter. Think of this as a way to define in your protocol for what type of messages uh, you're sending, what kind of method or action you want the clients or the server to execute because we could have this handler source on the server. And then here, uh, parameters you want to pass. So for example, if this was set text, um, we could have here a text string. Hello, this is my message. And this is how the chat application that we saw before in the browser works. Um, we're going to leave it as set background because I want to demo that I already have a WebSocket server deployed to the cloud connected to an online client. And if we send these messages for changing the color, it's going to change the background color of a website. Um, we're going to uh, need to change the, the URL of our host to a different one that we have deployed on Heroku and different port. Just by doing that, um, they will connect to the online server um, to this URL. So now here we have a P5 sketch, which is just waiting for a set background instruction. We can run our node client and see that it is setting the color to blue. So this web client knows uh, has a handler for the set background color action. And we can actually inspect that here. So when the set background handler gets executed, the background color variable of the P5 application is changing 
to the color parameter. And we can actually verify that this is working by going to our client code and changing the color that we're sending. So let's say that we do um, C green. And now we have to restart our client and send that color. Well, so that was an overview on WebSocket and we saw how to build a WebSocket server and a WebSocket client to connect to it or to connect to other remote WebSocket servers. And there are some things, I mean, there are a lot of things that we haven't covered in this tutorial, but we will have a link on the description of the video uh, with more detailed uh, code on GitHub uh, with some other things that you could do on the server side, on, on the client side. Thanks a lot for watching.